G'day, everyone. Welcome to the Trade Mate Sports Betting Podcast. Today, I'm joined by the director of Australian bookmaker Top Sport. I was I should have asked you before how to pronounce your last name, but I'll give it a crack. Tristan Merlihan, is that right, mate? Absolutely perfect. How you done well there, Alex? How you going, mate? There we go. Yeah, very, very good, mate. Um, maybe just start off by telling us a bit about Top Sport because, I mean, most people listening to this have maybe ne- not really heard of them before because uh, you are based in Australia and, and kind of what your role is with Top Sport. Yeah, so Top Sports uh, been around for probably fifteen years, but we uh, we're based in Australia, and we're a, we've probably been a niche operator for a long time. Um, we've been growing the business out quite aggressively in the last six months, probably twelve months. But we've started fifteen years ago from being an on course bookmaker. My dad Lloyd was the one of the biggest on course bookmakers at the Gold Coast in Queensland and in Sydney for a, for a, for many years. Um, and then when I was at uni, we decided we wanted to go online, so. We went online in I think it was around 2005 and we started quite small. It was just myself and dad for a while and we've grown the team out now to about 30 different traders, which is still small by some of the bigger operator scale, but we're certainly moving into that middle tier of operators. Um, we try to position ourselves by being a fair bookmaker. We, we take a fair bet on every option we got on the site. So that's our unique sort of, I, I suppose, way we position ourselves in the market and, and we feel we're getting good traction there. We're trying to grow the brand. We understand now that uh, in order to succeed under the the fee structure in Australia, it's quite difficult. So you need to try to scale a little bit better. So we are trying to grow the brand, but we're going to uphold our, you know, I suppose the integrity of, of the brand that's been in place for a number of years. So yeah, there aren't a lot of people in the mainstream that, that know about us, but we're hoping that'll change in the next little bit. But we have got that goodwill of being around for a long time. And most of the professional funders use us and, and have known about us for a long period. Yeah, well, you're one of the rare bookmakers these days that let you bet some pretty decent limits, mate. So it's a good, it's a good unique, uh, I guess, you know, little outlet for you. Yeah, for sure. And and you know, we, I think that stems back from the uh, the the days of being on the race course, where you know, I, I know the industry's changed and evolved, and as I touched on, the fee structures are there, which make it difficult for some of those bigger operators to to give everyone a fair bet, and maybe they can use that as an excuse as well at the same time, but. You know, our mentality has always been that if someone comes up to your stand, you've got to be able to look them in the eye and say, well, yeah, you can have this amount on. You know, it, where I feel that maybe the industry over the last few years has changed where someone can submit a bet and you might be offered $2.20 about an option and it's a, a trader making a decision that doesn't actually have to communicate the rationale to that person that's asking that question. You know, that problem falls to a, you know, a tra- uh, customer service operator where I sort of always say to our guys, you've got to, at least be able to justify if that customer that you make a decision on a bet comes to you and rings up, you've got to be able to explain why you've made that decision. And I think that sort of holds us in good stead. It keeps you accountable for your actions. And and we just want to offer a fair bet. We never ever go out there and say we're going to take every bet under the sun, but we uh, we always offer a very fair um, limit on, on all the all the different events. And that changes based on the quality of the event, the how close we are to jump time. Yeah. And, and I think we do that well. And, and I, I think we the customers respect that we offer them a very fair service as well, which is which is good. And, and we just want to make sure that we continue, no matter how we grow, we continue to always offer that service because I think I think it's something that you know we're proud of. And and as you grow, you've got to make sure you you uphold your the integrity of what's got you there. Yeah, no, definitely. I was going to say two dollars twenty is pretty good in some cases, mate. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, do, as a director, mate, like uh, I mean, it's a pretty like broad kind of title. Like, what are your day to day doings as a director of a sports book? Yeah, it's it it changes each day. So um, you know, I, I probably wear many hats. Uh, I, I enjoy doing a whole range of things. Like for example, today we got a couple of guys that, that are crook. Um, so I've got to go in there and trade the greyhounds a sabo. Um, you know, <laughs> in the morning I'm, I do a number of you know interviews like like yourself, and we talk to a few different outlets. We're trying to grow the brand, so I'm focused on that. We're in the midst of moving our office to. Uh, to, to Rabina, which is exciting. Um, so we've got to try to handle all of that. But like, it, it, it's a difficult one to give you a carte blanche answer on because there's just a, it's a different set of circumstances each day. Um, I'm trying to really make sure that our website and our apps continue to improve. We're rolling out a number of products, so I'm quite hands on in that. We're building same game multi at the moment, which we've released for rugby league and AFL, which are our two biggest sports in Australia. Um, and we're continually trying to roll out that product. So. That takes up a bit of my time as well, and then it's just dealing with customers and and you know you, m- making sure that people who are betting in you know sizable figures or professionals you, you can talk to them and explain or 
or if there's any issues you've got to talk to, you, you, you can get on get on board with them. So uh, to answer your question, it probably doesn't answer it very well, but it's it's just a case of whatever is required on the day. Um, you know, you get in there and solve. Yeah, sounds good, mate. Uh, and and why did I guess Top Sport decide to go down the path of a of a sharp bookmaker as opposed to a soft bookmaker because. Like I said before, it seems like, you know, you'd almost be close to like 99% of bookmakers are very, very soft. Yeah, well, I, I think we touched on just earlier. It's more so to do with our, our background and our race course mentality where, you know, I, I've, I've just always, I, I find it uh, a bit disappointing the way sometimes there can be a market put up on a website and certain customers can get access to it and other customers can't get a cent on. Now, I'm not saying... We bet the exact same limit to every customer. We, we bet a minimum limit where we'll, we'll guarantee we'll, we'll bet that to everyone. And then obviously that changes as, you know, as people bet more regularly with us. But what, what we do is we make sure that every event we've got on our site, we bet everyone to lose a minimum of 500 bucks. Um, and I think that's fair. And like my mentality is when, we're, when you're on a racetrack and you've got a price up on the board and someone comes up to you, you can't say, oh, this, this price is not available to you. It's only available to those four blokes over there in the pub. Um, so that that's sort of just been ingrained in me from when I was little, when I was working for dad, when I was swinging the bag. Um, and I've just always maintained that mantra. And, and I think it also like it, it, it also results in fairness from the customers as well. It takes away, you know, customers trying to find so many different avenues to bet in different people's names. Uh, you know, they're, they're going to respect us in, in a sense that if we're giving them a fair price, they're not going to do anything underhanded. Like, you know, we've got so many markets up on the site now, it's very easy to make an error or a blue and it's great a lot of the time now a lot of our customers show us that respect that if we have got an error they're not going to try to pick us off they'll give us a call and say hey you know um they're, they're more interested in, in the long-term relationship than sort of a one-off sort of thing so there's, there's many pros to it um and and i, I just think you know I'm, I, I love the game i love being involved in the sports betting industry and i just wouldn't ever want to go down the path of only betting a select group of customers like i just sort of you know, it wouldn't interest me so i think that's one of the big things as well yeah, awesome, mate. Uh, and I'd love to just talk about more of your your kind of top sport trading strategies and like I guess ways that you guys go about your business, like the more the finer details. Um, kick things off by talking about margins, like what kind of margins are you guys working towards? Because you know the sharp bookmakers, uh, you know, most popular one out there is probably Pinnacle, like you know, on the on soccer and stuff like that. There, most of the time they're working at like a two to three percent margin. You on on the bigger markets and. You go over to a soft bookmaker and it's probably closer to five to ten percent. Like, what kind of margins are you guys going for? Yeah, and, and Pinnacle's obviously been around for a long time. They, they do a great job, so we have a lot of respect for them. Um, we it depends on the to answer your question. It depends on the sport. Depends on the the tier of the, the league. So, for example, rugby league and AFL or AFL are our two biggest sports. Uh, we start the round by offering a dollar ninety line, so one hundred and five or five five percent margin. As we get closer to the game time, we increase that or we uh, take take less margin out of the, the market once we get more confident in the uh, in the event that we're working on. And then once the final teams have been announced in the last hour, uh, we get down to 103% or, th- or 3% margin where we bet the average of $1.93 on the lines. Um, and we guarantee that we'll bet every customer to win at least 10000 on the rugby league in the AFL in that last hour. Um, so that that... To give you a bit of a picture there, our marquee sports, obviously, you know, on some of your exotic markets like your try scorers and all those sort of things, it, it's difficult to give you a cut and dried answer there. But we just try to, I suppose, be in the most aggressive tier in the market in any of those uh, matches or any of those markets we offer. Some of the smaller sports, obviously, we're not trying to break any records like, you know, your, you know, your, uh, <laughs> Yeah, Iranian soccer or that that sort of thing. So it, it depends a little bit on, on the quality of the event. The EPL will will bet down at around about that three, four, five percent margin as well. So it, it, it we just have little guides in, in how we operate internally and then we just sort of set markets to those percentages. Yeah, and one of the more interesting things I think about Top Sport is you actually, even though you are, you know, allow quite big limits, like you guys have a heap of promotions and rewards and stuff like that for bonus bets and and all those kind of things like how are you able to do that whilst offering such high limits yeah so we um we we just make sure when we're bringing out any of these promotions or or anything like that which obviously we got to be a little bit mindful of what we can and can't discuss in that space because there's a lot of inducement sort of rules in australia but 
we just make a, um, a a decision that whatever we offer, we offer it to everyone, and um, you know all of our members receive the same the same offering as long as they, they don't abuse it. Obviously, we we have fair play rules, which I think are quite well well respected by our regular customers. So, other than that, yeah, we 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 never pull a it, we certainly would never pull a promo off someone on the back of them backing too many winners. That's just something we would never do. You know, like. It, we, we, we've got a great relationship with a lot of our professional punters. Like some of our best customers are guys that belt us and guys that win a lot of money off us over a, a period of a, a year. But what we use their information to, to try to sharpen our markets, to try to make our markets better, our models better. And we don't want to be offering them an inferior product. So as long as they're fair to us, we're going to always be fair uh, and reciprocate that. So yeah, definitely we, we will never ever uh, offer a promotion that only a handful of customers will be uh, will be entitled to receive. Yeah, and deciding your promotions too, is that, how is that? Is that quite tricky and, you know, finding the balance between the bottom line and getting something out there that will actually entice punters? Yeah, it, it is a tricky one and it's one that we uh, are going to continue to, to expand on over the next period. Uh, we, we're going to make sure that we are offering, uh, like we, we, we have to do two things. I think we compete very well with the, uh, with the bookmakers at the moment in terms of our market aggression and our limits. I think we do that very, very well. Um, we need to make sure that, you know, the punters that are maybe uh, betting with some of the, the more well-known agencies, uh, we have to look at, at ways to to make sure when they have an account with us, they actually use us a bit more and, and they're generally a, a higher type margin customer. So they're the ones that obviously we want to try to retain that business as well, as well as continue to service the bigger uh, professional type customers so it is a tricky it's a it's a balance you have to sort of say is this a loss leader is this something that is going to derive benefit down the line and obviously a, a, as we touched on we're going to offer it to everyone so it's it's a harder question to answer for us than a lot of the others yeah and and how how do you determine your your betting limits I, I assume it's you know much the case as you said before that the more confident you are on your price the the higher the limit you'll you'll take yeah, for sure. We we, um, we we determine the limits based on primarily, uh, well, two reasons. We base it on the quality of the event and then how long it is until that event starts. So a rugby league game, for example, which is, again is our, is our main sport in Australia for us, is on Monday or Tuesday when we release the prices, we don't have a lot of confidence because the teams haven't come out. So we'll have minor limits at that point. Tuesday night, the teams will come out. We'll still keep the limits quite low because you're, you're unsure how um how how movements like there's still going to be some uncertainty about players the weather isn't certain well, but when I say low I, I still feel we're offering a very fair limit because we bet everyone to win 500 from Monday Tuesday like we 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 which I think is very fair comparative to the marketplace then as we get closer to the to the event starting uh, we'll elevate those limits and then as mm. I touched on it'll get to say 10,000 where we bet to everyone in the um in the last hour once the teams are out horse racing similar. Uh, for a Saturday race, uh, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll bet a lot smaller than what you will um, once you're in that last sort of half an hour when the market's much more liquid. And, and I think that's been a, a policy in place for many years by a lot of the, the, the other sharp bookmakers that have been around and that maybe isn't being replicated by a couple of the other bookmakers at the moment, but it's something we, we think it, it is a good strategy. And obviously, I think customers also understand that, you know, you're not going to get as big a bet on a on – a, you know, Italian basketball game compared to a uh, to a Super Bowl. So as long as you can still give a fair bet, um, I, I just I just don't see any merit in having a market on the site and not taking a bet on it and and yeah. off anyone. So that's just always been our mantra in that regard. And any reason why you guys don't show your limits for each uh, at the time of you know whenever you're going to bet it? Yeah. So the reason we 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 don't and it's something that potentially we could work towards in incorporating that in the site is it is fluid. Like what we don't want to limit where, you know, as, as you touched on with Pinnacle, they're a, a great operator, but we have many instances where we might have a minimum of 500, but our pros, if, if we're looking to, to, to lay aside, we might take two or 3,000 off, off them on that bet. So they have an understanding of what they can, uh, that they know they're going to get. And if they want to request a bigger bet, then depending on the situation, depending on our book, depending on our opinion, we might set them for a bigger amount. Like as I touched on with the rugby league, uh, we bet everyone to win 10,000. Um, you know, there's been many instances where the sharpest brains, sharpest rugby league punters we have on our books, you know, might get thirty or 40,000 on at that period. So I think it works in that regard. 
it probably isn't a bad thing to have our minimums on a on a on the site because we are pretty transparent in that regard. We'll pop them up on Twitter or we'll say whatever you know we guarantee we're doing this. So uh, that way, it might give punters an understanding, and it's probably a good idea to to bring in. But I still want to give customers the opportunity to request bigger bets if if they if they see fit. Yeah. Okay. And what what sports overall do you, do you guys find the most challenging to to trade or to to make money on? Yeah, it, it's all the lower liquid sports. I, I guess they're the more difficult one. Obviously, your um, you know your your turnover isn't as great on that. We find a lot of difficulty on like I think that's a pretty obvious answer. I'd imagine most people are in the same sort of boat. But in terms of the bigger events the ones that probably trouble us the most is something like uh, in the rugby league season that's just gone or, or that's sorry that's in play at the moment we had a rule change early on in the season and mm-hmm. then we had some really bad weather in round two which sort of the expectation was points were going to be more on the back of this rule change but then you get the bad weather which obviously decreases it so it, it just takes a little while for all the models to catch up to that so i'd sort of, sort of say as a rule of thumb when you get rule changes and then you get something it's a bit of a red herring which uh, hurts the amount of data you have in a sort of small sample size. That makes things difficult. We had a real struggle the first month of the rugby league season. So things like that, I guess, are the um, are the areas that we battle at, but we're constantly trying to work work on ways to improve these sort of things. Yeah, must have been difficult, mate. It was hard myself to judge what was going to go. <laughs> I yeah. mean, it's only the second week of the rule changes and you get all the weather. It's it's tough stuff. How how does a how does a trading team look? I guess compared to a to a soft book, or maybe you just want to talk about how it just looks at, at top sport. Like how many how many traders have you got? Are they? I mean, can you just pick them off the street if you know what I mean? Like, because normally most people that come into a bookmaker or any type of betting industry job, like a lot of the time they they don't even really have much experience with sports betting. So, how do you go about designing a trading team but a sharp bookie? Yeah, so I, I can't really comment on what the other agencies do because I haven't I haven't been involved and I've only ever been in top sport. Um, but in terms of how we operate, um, we we have a team of around about twenty five to thirty at the moment, which is split between sport, racing, overnight. You know, some have a little hybrid role depending on what's on. Um, but to answer your question, how we bring people in, and we're in a process now where come. Come June, July, we are going to bring a number of new members into the team because we are moving to a bigger space and we're looking to grow the brand. Um, we very much prefer, and this is no disrespect to anyone in the industry at all, because there's a lot of sharp operators out there. And I know there's a lot of sharp operators at some of the perceived softer books, which I know at times can be frustrating when they aren't able to utilise their skill. But we've always had the best success bringing people that are, that are new to the industry that maybe because we operate so differently to the rest of the marketplace, you know, haven't got preconceived ideas on how things potentially should work. So we always look at people that come in with a great attitude, a love of sport, a love of racing, you know, obviously have an understanding of numbers. You, you can clearly see you've got a passion uh, in, in in being involved. So that's always been our policy to, to bring people in fresh that, that want to be involved, that want to be with us for an extended period of time and can see themselves uh, having a long career with top sport where we sort of obviously progress things as, as they're with us for, for longer periods. Yeah, so you, I guess you, even if someone doesn't have that much experience, you bring them in, teach them, teach them the ways, and and do they kind of just go towards one specific sport, or are they kind of you know taught to do a range of different activities? Yeah, so we, we bring them in, you know, as I said, without much experience, and we bring them into the office, and you know, I'll, I'll sit down and. and train as many of them as I can in the first instance. I'm probably getting a little bit old in the tooth now and I'm not as good as a lot of our <laughs> as a lot of our traders, but I, I try to at least give them the understanding or the um, you know, the make them get a feel for the policy and, and the integrity that we want to operate under. And then yeah, you'll get a lot of the other guys then that will will pass on their wisdom and um, and they'll they'll sort of start on a variety of different sports. As we're growing we're, we're getting to a more defined role where probably two or three years ago everyone did a bit of everything where now as, as we're getting a bit bigger there are a lot more defined roles in terms of certain people have different sports and, and races but there still is the necessity to be able to have an understanding of of the overall concept and the overall you know role in, in inside of what they do because as i touched on today i've got to go down there and trade greyhounds there are instances <laughs> where we still aren't a, a massive team in terms of our, our numbers so you need to be able to cover people when they are sick or you know people are away or you know there's a 
there's, there's a big event on in a sport that, that you may not necessarily be comfortable with. So you, you need to have a good understanding of different elements of it. And and that's just something that grows with the role. You know, we'll, if, if they're a racing trader, they might start on the New Zealand uh, dogs where it's obviously a much smaller uh, market compared to Flemington on a Saturday for the sport. You might start on, you know, some of the US sports, which are a lot easier to manage and those sort of things. So, and then you progress through and you get, once you get your confidence there, you move into 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 more higher turnover sort of markets. Yeah. What what metrics do you guys look at? I mean, obviously, other than the the bottom line to, to kind of judge your success, but is there any other like metrics? I mean, like, I guess the sports betting equivalent of something would be, you know, seeing what your expected value is. Do you guys look at anything like equivalent to that? Yeah, we're, we're building a few things in there to, to really sort of make the reporting, um, you know, the, the guys have an understanding of what they're doing well and, and what they aren't. But I suppose from our end, it, it's more so looking at a book once it jumps. So that's sort of for the, for the bigger events. You generally look at a book and you say, well, and, and which is that sort of like we don't have anything hard and fast at the moment in terms of, of how we gauge that. But from my end, I, always, I, I use a very simple rule of thumb. If I don't need to sit there and actually sweat on the result of the game, then I, I feel comfortable that the guys that traded it in, in, in a way that, that is competent and, and, and we're going to be successful long term. So it is just trying to make sure that the average dividend you're laying is acceptable or sometimes um, you, you get situations where you can't avoid them and there's a late movement, but it's trying to minimise the damage on those sort of situations. So I guess to answer the question, it is looking at the uh, the expected value of, of a game and you want to make sure that's as high as possible and trying to manage and utilise the knowledge of those sharper customers, not just, you know, ticking the bet in or betting in the limit and, and, and making the necessary changes. So it's how particular bets the, the traders sort of react to those and that flows through to other markets. So you may take a bet on a specific market and, you know, you haven't got much other activity, so you might lose on that on the back of the sharp activity. But if you can get some results somewhere else in different, you know, child markets in, in games, and that, that's a big positive as well. So they're the sort of things we look at, and it's something, yeah, we're definitely in the process of adding a lot more reporting tools to make that a lot clearer as well for the guys. So you're saying that you, you like, I guess, employ your traders to try to balance the books as, as much as possible? And if you do, would like, can you maybe highlight a few ways that you guys are able to balance your books yeah we don't really try to balance their books to be honest like that there it, it depends on on the situation so we're very very comfortable taking an opinion like i love nothing more than having a big stand on a game like where we're going to win or lose a big number or on a match like it's it's the bookmaking mentality we're certainly not going out there to try to make it a, a round book which is where you win on both both options but by the same token you need to use the information and you need to make sure you're trying to lay the bets that you feel is going to give you the best performance long term. So it's not a case of if, if we've got a, a position where we might have one of our big whale type customers that we feel confident over an extended period, we, we, we sh, you know hopefully can, can be profitable in that regard. We don't want to stack up the liability on the other side by all sharps. Like if, if we get a lot of sharps that come opposing this, then we still want to respect that business. And we say, okay, well, we're more confident now to Hmm. To, to, to stand this, have a li bigger liability on this game because the, the market is telling us that our original price was right. In terms of betting back with other bookmakers, yeah, we, we, we certainly use Betfair a lot. Like I, I have a huge respect for Betfair and the way they operate. On sport, it's a little bit difficult to get set with a lot of the other bookmakers um, at the moment, which, you know, is that's entirely up to them how they wish to operate. So we don't really do a lot of other a lot of other bet backing with the other bookies on the, on the sport. On the racing, we do. We, we do manage our position in that regard. Um, but it, it's a case of what we do, which is quite effective, is if we're trying to, you know, move our position in a game, then we'll get more aggressive the other side. And and it's not just, um, for example, in this game uh, of rugby league tonight, obviously for people listening this down the track, you, you won't be tonight, but the, the Panthers are playing the Broncos and the Lions are very, very lopsided um, game. It's, it's going to be 27, 28 and a half. So if you get sharp activity on one option, you can move or you can pull different levers and try to offset your liability in other areas. So in other words, if a lot of you know money's coming for the, the plus, you might be trying to lay 13 pluses or 19 pluses or these sort of options to to, to still give you a, a, a position in those in those books, but make sure it's a position that you're you're comfortable taking on. Yeah. And I mean you're obviously highlighting a few ways here where you can eliminate risk. Are there any other like ones that come to mind of ways you guys try and yeah manage your risk as much as possible? 
Yeah, it, it's, it's really just though, like if we've got a position where we're overcommitted, we'll use Betfair late to, to bring down our risk if, if, if it's higher than what our, our market liability is on that particular event. And then the, the big one is we're, we're in the position now where a lot of the sharp judges do bet with us. So we can push our price, you know, even a little bit higher than Betfair or, or, or you know, the big big bookmakers overseas. And you get a you get a pretty good influx of bets coming in, which also serves as reducing that liability if you're laying the other side of the uh, of, of the equation. Yeah, how, how much do you guys adjust your prices based on money coming in versus your own models? Yeah, it, it's it's a tricky one. So when we set, a, again, going back to Rugby League, which is our biggest event, we'll, we'll set our markets on the Monday, Tuesday, sort of in line with the marketplace. We'll have a little opinion on certain games if, if we feel that way. And then we'll, we'll let our model roll out and, and extrapolate all the other prices for the markets at that point. And then we really respect the, the weight of money that comes in the market. We'll still see what the um what the other agencies are offering but if, if we're getting one-way traffic on on certain uh, certain teams we're, we're not afraid to jump in front of the market and move the line from a you know four and a half to a six and be the only bookie there um and, and back our opinion in that regard so we uh it, it, to answer your question it's a combination of all three you have to you have to respect the market that's key you have to <clears throat> respect the customers that are that are sharp and, and you know are, are sharp and yet and you have to back our traders with with their opinion as well but it's important that not any of those uh, factors outweigh the other, because if if you don't get that ecosystem correct, then it can it can go pear shaped pretty quick. And and I think that's the thing that you know our tra- our traders um, learn along the way that yeah, it's great to have an opinion and and we we back them. But if the market and if sharp punters are telling you otherwise, you don't have to be too proud to say okay, well maybe I got this one wrong, and, and let's just mm-hmm. shift it a little bit and ma- maybe catch it at a lower price as well. And you mentioned that you're looking to expand and, and bring in more people throughout the middle of this year. How, how much is, I guess, automation factoring into that? And if you guys are, yeah, what you guys are kind of doing in that space and what, what the future might look like there for potential traders out there? Yeah, so I reckon a lot of the other potentially bigger bookmakers are probably moving more towards automation. We're probably going the other way where we're trying to... Uh, Every day we're building out more and more models at our end to, to make ourselves um, less reliant on what's in the marketplace. You know, obviously your your smaller sports, you're still going to have to have some sort of automation set up to make sure you're in line with the market. We don't have a big enough team to be able to know the ins and outs of every soccer league and basketball league around the world. But in terms of our bigger sports, it's something we're spending a lot of time and a lot of investment in, in funds in, in making sure that we're backing our prices. We're, we're going to control the key variables in that market and we're going to make sure that our prices are purely derived off, off what we're betting. So uh, we are probably different in that space. It's an exciting time for people coming into, into our business because there is a lot of growth. There. It, it, it's not a concern where some of the others, you know, you, you might sort of see other trading teams shrinking. We're going in the other direction. We know that if we want to compete with the bigger guys, we need to do it on the on our home ground, and that's that's bookmaking. And the only way you can bookmake is with with humans mm. uh, who have an opinion but respect the market, and, and that's where we're moving towards. Awesome. And and a couple more questions just on the the overall betting landscape in Australia. Uh, do you have any thoughts on on live betting and and whether you think it might evolve here in Australia to, I guess, a better offering compared to those from overseas? Yeah, oh, we'd love it to. Um, you know, it's it, it doesn't seem like there's anything on the horizon that, that's going to change anything too rapidly. I, I, it would be a huge, huge benefit. But there's been some significant changes in the responsible gambling space in the last 18 months, which I'm all for. I, I, I think that's a very important with, with the live betting. It's something that has changed over uh, over a period. And, and, and I think the responsible gambling side of it is great. Um, but that, I think, is is hurting the ability or the opportunity for live betting to come in Australia. I know the the bodies that are making those decisions have got a concern over live betting on the internet and how that correlates with with the responsible gambling side of things. So Mm. I'm sort of of the opinion that if you get that side of it right and you make sure people are getting prompted to bet within their means and there's constant, you know, uh, surety around people capping their wallets and those sort of things, then it, 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 it shouldn't change in that regard. So that, that is the difficulty um, of, of where we're at at the moment. But um, and, and for our point of view, it'd be so, so much easier, like literally every phone bet, every live bet we have to take is via the phone. So it's just a strain on resources 
and I know it's just not for us, it's for everyone in Australia. So it would be a huge change if we come in. I know it'd be so much more favourable for punters as well. It's something I'd love to see, but I just don't see anything on the absolute immediate horizon that's going to change in a positive direction, unfortunately. Yeah, and, and mate, to finish off, I thought I would throw it out to you and ask if there's anything, any other changes or maybe it's just the live betting stuff that you'd, that you'd like to see in the in- industry. Oh, there's a few things that I'd love to see. Like um, as I touched on, the fees are very, uh, very excessive at the moment in certain sports. I think they've probably um, shifted too far uh, that are hindering the bookies. And I know your listeners aren't going to have any sympathy for us that we're paying too big a fee. <laughs> but but what I want to get forward and I want to make sure it's important to understand that it's not me crying poor in that sense. What it is is it's affecting the whole landscape. And by these fees getting ratcheted up, every time what it is 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 hurting the pundits because yeah. the 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 prices come down the limits get decreased um you know at, at the end of the day the pundits are paying these taxes which i feel of course we need to contribute to the industry of course we need to contribute to the racing industry of course we need to pay back to rugby league and afl but you see bookmakers like pinnacle who aren't having to pay these sort of fees that are able to offer such a competitive product for their pundits i'd love to see us get to a, a, a balance where you know, maybe there's some minimum limits brought in for rugby league and AFL, but the fee structure's tweaked in the sense that, you know, it, it's we, we can offset that expense that, that is going to ensure that there's more sharp money getting invested. Um, in, in that regard, I think it'd be great for punters. I think it'd actually get the SP to a, a, a quicker, a quicker uh, to, to the right number quicker as well. So I think there's a lot of things that need to change. I've been communicating a lot with all the different bodies about all of these ideas, not just trying to push our own barrow, trying to look at things that, makes the industry sustainable because I think that's key. Uh, the racing side of things has been on a real upward trajectory in terms of the, the fee structure and that's something we've been in constant talks over the last 18 months um, and obviously COVID hit and everything changed. So um, it's something that I think is important for punters to understand that whenever you see these new structures brought in, it's not just us that's getting hit, it's, it's the punters as well. And I think that's important as a collective. We've got to find a way that all three bodies are... are um, you know, are, are, are getting a fair shake of the stick. And, and I've always said whenever you're negotiating something, if someone is very happy with the outcome, then it's probably not a fair, you know, a, a, a fair fair outcome for the other two parties. Yeah, well said, mate. I really enjoyed our chat today, mate. I think it's really interesting for people. I don't. We've never had anyone from, I guess, the bookmaker side of things that can talk about how it operates at a sharp bookie at least. So, this has uh, been really interesting. I hope, yeah, everyone listening has gotten something out of it. Is there uh, any any promotion you want to do, mate? Anything coming up that you want to, yeah, shout out? I guess you want people to go make an account at topsport.com.au. Yeah, well, as I, uh, well, especially for your listeners that I know are going to be on the sharper sort of variety, the thing that I always say is that you should always <clears throat> explore your avenues. If you haven't heard about us, jump on there and have a look. Compare our prices to where you're currently betting. And at the end of the day, like, um, you just need to give yourself the opportunity to be securing the best price whenever you're having a selection. And the more opportunities you have that, you know, when you see a price on our board, you're going to be able to have a bet as well. So that's key. So I just yeah, implore all of your listeners to jump onto topsport.com.au, have a look. And if you've got any feedback on things we can do better, we're very open to it as well. As I said, we're trying to grow. We're trying to um, <clears throat> grow at our offering. So we're, we're looking to to make ourselves one of the strongest platforms in the country going forward. So any any feedback any new customers would, would be greatly appreciated mate i'm very lazy so if i've got any feedback for you i'd love a search bar <laughs> <laughs> no it's on in the pipeline <laughs> oh yes that's all i need mate happy to <laughs> very good <laughs> all right great having you on tristan and thanks everyone for listening if you could do a quick rate and review that would be super Perb and subscribe to us wherever you are listening and yeah if you're looking to implement some of the strategies we talked about today more so the value betting ones start a free week trial of trade mate sports cheers again tristan we'll have to catch up soon thanks mate bye